Okay, welcome back to Tech Ministries. This study will be part 2, of part 1, of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We concluded part 1, determining that this chapter is speaking of the day of the Lord, and not the rapture of the church. We also ended on the teaching of the falling away, and how that will come to the revealing of the man of sin. Today we will continue with the significance of the falling away, as step 1 to the identifying of the Antichrist, and the actual coming of the day of the Lord. So let's get started. As we have said, the falling away, will be the climatic end to church denominations, as we know it. By the beginning of the tribulation, all denominations will have integrated into the doctrines of the one world religion. That one world religion, the Bible calls the harlot of Babylon. The falling away will culminate into a single world religion, and she will reign over all nations, and all the kings of the earth. And thus will be one of the starts of the tribulation period, and the trigger to revealing the Antichrist. From this point on, we will use the book of Revelation, to fill in the blanks this book of Thessalonians has hidden from us. Now let me introduce you to the whore of Babylon, the one world religion, which came into being as a result of the falling away. Scripture says, And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of the harlots and abominations of the earth. Know this, that where the truth is not found, where a falling away has occurred, a counterfeit truth will fill the void, as seen here by the rise of the woman, the one world religion. As Paul said, don't be deceived, even today the world is being manipulated to progress toward this point. And once it reaches there, then the day of the Lord is truly at hand. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore dost thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. Anything that is now, in the pit, arrived there in ancient times. All are of the fallen angels who mated with women, during the days of Noah. God reserved them there, until the last days, at such a time where he would use them, to judge the earth on his behalf. So the beast, which the woman rode upon, is from the pit, and will be used of God, to influence men to embrace the woman, the one world religion. Therefore, the beast that was, was in ancient times. And was not, once he was confined to the pit. And yet is. When he is released from the pit, at the last days to again deceive men. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. Okay, the seven heads, are seven mountains, which are seven kingdoms. 
There are also seven kings, who are heads of those kingdoms. Of those seven kingdoms, and seven kings, five are of times past. And one is, which is the Roman government, at the time of John's writing. And the other is yet to come, during the tribulation period, who will continue a short time. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Remember, the beast is one of the fallen angels that came out of the pit, to judge the earth on behalf of God, from which the woman received her endorsement, and power. And during this time, ten kings arose having no kingdoms, but nevertheless, reigned as rulers, receiving their power, from the beast. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Well, well, well. What just happened here? The beast from the pit, that endorsed the woman, the one world religion, and gave to her her authority, snipped her wings, and removed their endorsement. And the ten kings, now having received their kingdoms, who also received their authority from the beast, overthrew the woman, the one world religion, in order that Satan himself, should fill the gap, and be worshipped himself as God of this world. Now let's return back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and pick up this teaching there. Scripture says, For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Once the falling away has set the stage for the one world religion, and once the one world religion runs its course, and is overthrown, then the Antichrist will step in, to fill the void. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Can you now see that the falling away from the truth, is instrumental in the establishment of the one world religion, and the one world religion is used as a puppet of Satan, until he abolishes it, and take the throne of worship to himself, to become worshipped by the entire world. I believe these two events gives to us a timeline. Once the falling away reaches its max, a one world religion will be established, and after three and a half years, it will be overthrown by the beast, to make way for Satan to obtain the throne of God on earth and he will be worshipped as God for three and a half years, until Jesus comes back at his second coming, to take the throne back. Then Paul reminds them, saying, Remember ye not, that when I was yet with you I told you these things? Here Paul is reminding them, of what he taught them about this very event, when he came to them to establish the churches. This subject was taught to them in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, so they can reflect back on that to receive some answers. Then Paul writes this statement, which appears to be clear to them, but a puzzle to us saying, And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. So many views have been written about these verses. What is it that withholdeth, who is it that is restraining? I've read it's the presence of the church, I've read it's the presence of the Holy Spirit, I've read it's Michael the Archangel. Well, let me add another to the list, I think it's simply God. What is holding back the reveal of who the Antichrist is, is not one thing, but a process. 
it is the restraints God has put in place from the beginning to hold back evil. That restraint is truth. Paul said. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now lets will let, until he be taken out of the way. In other words, in Paul's day, iniquity, evil, and deception, was already present and operating, and God was letting it operate and will allow it to operate, until it is brought to pass that God himself, is moved out of the way. That is to say, through a decrease in truth, and an increase in unbelief, is that which will eventually allow the reveal of the Antichrist. This is the restrainer of truth in Paul's day. As the truth decreases, evil and deception increases bringing the world closer to the reveal of the Antichrist. This is the restrainer of truth in our day. As the truth decreases, evil and deception increases bringing the world closer to the reveal of the Antichrist. This is the restrainer of truth, during the first half of the tribulation period. As the truth decreases, evil and deception increases bringing the world closer to the reveal of the Antichrist. During the last half of the tribulation period, the Antichrist will reveal himself because for the most part, God has been taken out of the way, and only a remnant of Christians, holding the truth and hiding away, will be sought after and killed, as a reward for their opposition. It is the absence of truth, which allows for conditions, for the Antichrist to reveal himself. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. So, when the falling away reaches its zenith, the woman, the one world religion, will take its place. And when the woman, the one world religion is overthrown, the Antichrist, will take her place. And three and a half years later, Christ will return, destroy him, and take his place, to rule and reign forever, and ever. This concludes part two of our study of Second Thessalonians, chapter two. If you would like to be one, to escape the day of the Lord, and if you would like to be one, to miss the revelation of the Antichrist. Tell God. I know I am a sinner and in need of a Savior. Tell God. I believe Jesus died for my sins. Tell God. I believe he was dead and buried. And tell God. I believe he rose on the third day. If your confession is from the heart, the day of the Lord will not affect you, but it is the rapture, which will overtake you. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the study of the second book of Thessalonians, the second chapter. I pray that it answered some of your unanswered questions, and gave you a firmer understanding, of the end times. If this study have blessed you, please share it with your family and friends, and subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Now as Paul says. Watch and pray, Amen.